So before we start with the session, any questions from anyone, please? Any questions, please? Hi, Lakshman, this is Sunil. Yeah, hi, Sunil, please. Yeah, Lakshman, it was uh, mentioned in the email that we got that after one month, you will be preponing the session to 6 a.m. Correct, correct. So why you need to prepone the session? Because this is the best suitable time. Uh, 6 a.m. would be too early. Uh, yes, that is true, uh, but the people attending from India, for them it would be late if it is going to be continued for complete course. So it would be late. Now we are starting at 8, it will be ended by 9.30. Now can you ask like all of the people in the uh, attending the class and if, if, the, if everybody is saying 6 a.m. then that's fine, but I think... No, no, no. I don't one, think... One everybody... point is clear. Uh, that's how we'll be preponing for sure. Okay, fine. And another thing that I wanted to ask is like, I do not have much Oracle Apps background and even the accounting background. So uh, will you be like uh, uh, putting some emphasis, like uh, some explanation on, like uh, I might have some questions from the accounting side, basic questions. So I hope that would be okay with you. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. We'll do that. Hey, Lecture, this is Pearl. I have a question. How long are each session going to be, each one of these classes? So, uh, we, the entire course will finish tentatively in the two months if required. We may extend to one or two more weeks also. And mm -hmm. the duration for each session is one hour, 30 minutes. Okay. And classes from Monday to Friday, as per India. Okay. Calendar. Yep. And then, and you said the the time will change to 6.30 a.m. Right. After one month, we'll okay. go to 6 o'clock. Okay. 6 uh, a.m. IST. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. Fine. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone, please? Hey, hi, Lakshman. Yeah, hi. Hey, hi. Very good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a question. Is it after attending this training, do I get to uh, do I get more use cases, test cases to practice on? During this training itself, we are going to see all those. Okay, we take example of a variable application. What setups we have to perform, and what are the different functionality yeah. we have as a part of tables. I'll take you through the detail level with the setups as well as process you can consider as that is a testing we are going to test each and every functionality how that can be executed the same you can repeat from your end i'm not going to tell you so this is how it works and all we'll see in the application the same you can do from as a practice. okay so you just once you that you can consider as a, some test case you are testing here one request here after your question you can go on mute Again, if you have any question, you can unmute. Otherwise, in between, we are getting some background noise. Yeah, fine, done. Yeah, please, if any other questions, please. Hi, Mr. Lakshman. Yeah, Abdul, can you be a bit loud? Voice, just, the voice is very, very low. Is it, is it okay now? Yeah, now it's good. Yeah, please. Okay, Mr. Lakshman, uh, I noticed sometimes, you know, the instructors, Say that okay because uh, it is mentioned like financials okay so at the time of any invoice come from uh, purchasing or from some other uh, module they say that okay I don't have a setup for this and that so we will we will do like this we will continue you need to finish that setup and all that. I hope I mean this will not be repeated here and secondly no no one second. Uh, uh, what you said, what, what you said exactly are you talking about? You know, uh, see, for example, now this, this course belongs to financial. Fin Financials, yes. Yeah, suppose if any, any, any invoice coming from uh, supply chain. Okay. okay uh, in tables. Okay. Okay. So at that time, at that time, you know, if, if at all any, any question asked or any doubt is raised. So usually the instructor say that, you know, I don't have uh, 
uh, so pretty and shut up or i don't have no, one second one second i got your point in our clusters yeah. along with our core financials i am going to cover yeah. p2p and o2c cycles also okay okay will okay p2p inventory basic setups purchasing basic setups and order management basic setups and we will mm-hmm. go through p2p and o2c cycle so that you can understand everything there won't be any issue where you will be raising question okay and yeah. be answering as a uh, this is not our course etc no will be covering p2p and o2c also that means we'll get uh, the complete understanding about how things works and one more very yes. important point is we are not going to depend on any existing configured environment okay we are going to do everything from the scratch so we'll we'll come to know each and everything whatever we are going to do in the system we'll have a full control on that specific activity or process that's how we are going to run the classes fine Uh, I don't have much uh, knowledge on uh, uh, counting side. As another gentleman raised the point that he may ask some questions, so it's same like with me also. Yeah, sure, sure, no issues. Just uh, we'll we'll I'll take you through it. I'll take care of uh, these points. Okay, I'll make sure that we'll get to what we are trying to understand. And if any questions, I'll invite questions from the participants. You can stop me and you can raise the questions then and there. No issues. The last question, the last point only. Yep. I expect that I mean, like, uh, uh, sup- suppose if I need to do any kind of uh, implementation or something, we will start from taking the opening balances and all. So I hope I'm going to cover. Conversions also, I'm going to cover. I'm going to co- cover the conversions in fusion. The conversion okay. part is functional part, but in case of EBS, that's a purely technical. we require technical resource to execute the data conversions that could be master data transactional data but in the fusion there is a functional task i'll be covering master data transactional data conversions in the different applications see simple let me tell you one point after these classes you can work in the implementation project or support project you'll be able to handle the financials so that is the target of this course any other questions please thank you so will you be sharing any documentation uh... when you talk about documentation uh, when we run through these classes each and everything i'll be capturing into spreadsheet it could be setups or process or specific functionality related additional setups and process everything will write in this spreadsheet so that sheet i'll be sharing with everyone along with the every session recorded video So apart from that okay. if you required we will provide student guide also yep yeah that would be fine that we'll we'll do that yep thank you yeah thanks any other questions please hello hi this is uh, bupal yeah bupal hi lakshna yeah, yeah is this training uh, going to be a pure functional or is it a techno functional training functional training okay Okay thank you yeah thanks any other questions in cloud there is no much scope for technical people the guys who are working as a technical consultants and dbas and ebs applications they are just migrating to functional okay even if you learn technical there is a very very less scope there won't be any demand if you are going to be a technical consultant you know in if you take 10 cloud implementation hardly two or three consultants may be required again they are not very much dedicated for the each and every project as a shared resource multiple cloud projects a few technical consultants you can find out hardly they'll be working for conversions Oh, sorry early they will be working for integrations so that's how we have very less demand for technical people so whatever it may your plan may be learning technical but you have to learn functional along with the functional if you learn technical there will be 
you can just find it as a, some added advantage if you are going to learn only technical the scope of opportunities are very less there is a very less demand in the market so this what oracle is they are trying to convert the technical things okay to manage in the easiest way or in the functional uh, fun i mean it they are trying to convert the technical work the burden into the functional part you see the conversions and all they convert they just uh, completely they remove that burden of technical work and that can be handled by functional people again what are the integrations we have in the fusion applications they simplified okay it's uh, it's like you can do the integrations with less coding or zero coding so everything is drag drag and drop kind of options they provided so that's how the integrations also can be done in the cloud applications okay uh, mr lakshman any chance of uh, discussing about lcm landed cost management during the course landed cost management you know, it's uh, that's a completely different applications we, we don't touch that application at all uh, is there uh... I mean, are there separate application available in the uh, Fusion or? Yes, that that is there in the Fusion as well as uh, in the EBS also. That is there. EBS. That, that yeah. Um, yeah. That okay, is... you provide the training. You provide the training for that as well. No, no, no. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Any other questions? Hi, Lakshman. How do you? Uh, I mean, uh, this is Rohit. And uh, I yeah. would like to know, like, what edge does it have over Workday Financials? Workday Financials. Yeah. <clears throat> See. Even both are cloud-based, so I'm just thinking, like, what edge does correct, Oracle correct, have? Correct, correct, correct. If you compare, yeah. if you compare uh, the Workday Financials or Workday HCM, it the Workday is a very small. Uh, accounting package, you can say, like if you compare Workday with uh, or Oracle Financials or Oracle Fusion Financials in front of this Oracle application, that is a small application. Okay, you don't see that uh, whatever the flexibility you see in the Fusion application. Here we got uh, vast functionality, and uh, within the Workday, you, you, will, you don't find all these functionalities what you have. You have in the Oracle EBS financials or Oracle Cloud financials. So it's a small accounting package. It's a same as like a tally, focus, wings. It's a better than those packages and it's not greater than Oracle Fusion of financials application. Okay. So that's how we have. Okay, so uh, functional wise, uh, this is good in terms yes. of like, is this also a tenant based architecture? Like, correct, tenant based. Yes. And all. yes. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, Lakshman, this is Anand uh, from California. Yeah. I have a few questions if you have. Uh, okay. Uh, so, the first thing I wanted to know about uh, so what are the um, uh, specific modules you're going to touch? Say for example, it, it, uh, if they talk about financial, it's, it's like a bigger canvas, right? So right, are we right. going to touch about AI? Yeah, uh, for uh, this question, I mean, uh, uh, no, no, Anand, one second. Uh, for this question, I'll be answering maybe in the end, end of the session. I just included a course curriculum also. I'll take you through the course curriculum okay. so that you can understand. But to give a quick okay. answer to your question, primarily we are going to focus on General ledger, accounts payables, account receivables, cash management, and fixed assets. These are the primary applications where we are going to focus. Along with that, we'll be covering the P2P and O2C cycles and the basic configuration process flow for fusion tax and the fusion expense. Fusion tax is nothing but in EBS, EBT, the e business tax and fusion we are calling as fusion tax. In EBS, whatever we have as IE expense, the same we call as fusion expense in the fusion applications. So along with these five okay. applications, the basic configuration process flow we'll see in those two applications. And other points to understand is we are going to cover P2P and O2C. The everything, whatever the applications we are referring now, everything will do the will do the configuration from the scratch. We are not going to okay. 
just use some existing configuration as a part of vision or oracle predefined no when we okay uh, okay so we're taking up a fresh instance and yeah. uh, so when, when you talk about the taxation are we uh, um, we're going to cover uh, the intercompany uh, transactions, intercompany process, and as well as the customs process in this, are we going to touch it or? Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll be, we'll be covering. Once we're done with the payables and receivables, I'll, I'll, I'll cover uh, intercompany transactions. After completing that, we'll move on to fixed assets and other applications. We'll do that. Okay, thanks. And um, so, um... Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, other uh, so, uh, the uh, friend asked that uh, there be if there is any uh, uh, cross functional or cross module uh, setups is required. Uh, you will be uh, having that like like O two C or any other management setup that's that's required required to that's move on to the financial uh, flow. So we have a dependency on the other cross tracks that you will be handling it, right? Exactly, exactly. When you say we are going to cover P two P cycle. You have to do the setups in the inventory and to purchase it. Otherwise, you cannot run the full cycle of P2P, right? So those will, will be correct in the classes. When you do the real okay. in, the, in the fresh instance, mm -hmm. what approach we follow that we are going to follow. That means we are going to create everything from the scratch. So when we are going to create everything oh. scratch from for the financials, the same time if you want to test P2P or O2C. So you have to do the same for those applications also. Okay, thank you. And uh, okay, uh, so so this I, I understand from your conversation. This 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 uh, course is intended for functional as less like BSA for uh, uh, fusion. Um, and do you, uh, you're going to uh, is any anywhere you're going to in this course uh, you're going to cover the uh, uh, kind of technical architecture to give an overview what sort of architecture we have within the fusion because many of our functional consultants and art will know the. Nowadays, I you know the uh, technical architecture of what well, what what they at least to know but to have a head. Yeah, we discuss have the those points. Knowledge about. Yeah, what level mm -hmm. of knowledge okay. you require being a functional consultant about technical stuff that I'll take care. Of. Okay, we'll talk on that. Correct. Because, correct. It's not the purely functional functional roles. Yeah, I got it. I got now. it. There's Just so much overview. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In EBS, we okay. what technical right. people can do and how they do. Right. Not do right. Okay. But we know that okay. okay, we should get some idea. If you are going to do the integrations, what are the different options we have? Okay, right. what is possible, what is not possible in technical point of in the fusion applications. And again, I'll just take yeah, I mean, basic uh, writing SQL queries and basic BA report preparation and all. So but mm. when it comes to core integrations and all, we can discuss how they do, what are the different options are available in the fusion cloud. Yeah, I mean that is much needed, right? Because the the environment is so much uh, involved now. We have we cannot go with. I mean, fish, I mean, Oracle ERP is not a standalone system. It has to be interact with the uh, different uh, yes, third point yes. system. So, what kind of uh, gateway it is providing? That might be uh, given yeah, uh, we, yes. in a very broad area. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. There are a few points which you have to understand. Uh, ICS, SOA, and other points. We'll we'll talk on that, which are mm -hmm. technical. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Right. Yes. And uh, on the next question is, uh, what about the hands-on uh, training? For example, if you wanted to do, a, you go, you are uh, taking a uh, session on the particular uh, revenue uh, uh, GL posting, right? I mean, I wanted to do a hands-on on that. Is there any way to? Do, are you sharing this uh, environment for us or? Uh, uh, yeah. Whatever? We will, if you want uh, such kind of environment test, we will give you that you can uh, practice any other applications also in the same environment. We'll provision the access to those okay. applications. I probably can create a user and. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, okay. And uh, uh, oh, one more question. And uh, in, in, okay, so if I wanted to uh, uh, pose you for the certification, so is there any, is there any uh, precise? Uh, uh, Session in that uh, in, in the precise uh, precise uh, uh, part of a session uh, which should, uh, guide me to go, go on to a certification. Yeah, let, let me, me to get the certification. Let me talk about it offline. One second. Let me stop the recording. Sure. Yeah. Any questions from anyone, please? Any possibility of uh, showing us how to do the form personalization? Yeah, form personalization. We can do 
and uh, we have a different environments in case of cloud in which environment that is possible in which environment it is not possible we, I'll, I'll take you through but yes I'll introduce how you can do the form personalization environment. Here the big challenge is if we discuss that form personalization people are practicing and just they are making some mandatory fields or optional etc etc they are leaving as this okay they are not caring about others as they are practicing. So that is a challenge you are facing. No, no issues. I'll take you through that if you want to see. So um, this is Kishore. Uh, is yeah. this training more focused on uh, for Q2P or uh, uh, I just want to know what modules are we covering? Yeah. Uh, from uh, the overall. The, uh, this training is focused on finance applications. Okay. G right. Fina finance includes uh, GL. AP, AR, CM, and FK. So along huh? with the Yeah, along with so the no. Yeah, please. So the thing is, my my background is pro to pay. Okay. So I was wondering if your focus is covering all modules or specific modules. Um, because Same. when we apply for cloud um, jobs, we have to be specific as to what we are applying. You know. So, uh, oh, got you. Like uh, here, this training will be focusing on majorly finance applications just to understand how to do the basic setups and how to run the basic flow of P2P cycles. We'll just work on inventory and do purchasing. We are not going to focus on inventory and purchasing, that just basic configuration, basic flow to understand how the transaction data flows from the supply chain to finance applications. Okay, that, uh, that so when you say supply chain to financials, are we talking about uh, requisition, yes. purchase order, vouchering, and pay cycle, and uh, sending to GL, right? Correct, and the sales order and out of invoice creation receivables that also will be covered. All right, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Fine. Seems to no questions as of now. So, if you have any questions, we can uh, spend time end of the session. And now let's get into the actual demo, which is scheduled for today. Any questions? No. Fine. So. So when you talk about this course, uh, you have uh, two options. One, you can attend uh, online classes without time availability. Otherwise, we have a uh, recorded class videos also from previous classes. Okay, previous batches, I mean. From previous batches, we have a uh, recorded videos. Those are very interactive, uh, like videos. I mean, like from the live classes only, we extracted those videos. You can take those videos and you can play in your free time and other side, if you want to attend the live classes, yes, you can do that. This is how you can speed up your learning. If you want to complete this course as soon as possible, yes, you can do that. Even if you subscribe the videos, you can attend any live classes also, maybe current batch or upcoming batches. Okay, you are allowed to attend live classes also if you subscribe the videos. And along with the videos, we will provide you the instance. You can go through those videos and you can practice and if you have any questions, I would be available. We can connect and we can discuss if you have any sort of queries or if you need any clarity on any topic on specific session, which you go through through videos. Fine. And uh, as a part of today agenda, we'll talk about what is the fusion applications, what does it mean by fusion applications, and what is the difference between on-premise and the cloud and what are the different options are available for customers to use these fusion applications? And very high level, I'll take you through what's new in the fusion applications. And I'll take you through the course curriculum, what exactly we are going to cover through this training program. The very first point is, what does it mean by fusion applications? As we know, there are many ERP products in the market. Okay, I just listed very few here to understand about the meaning of vision applications. So one of the ERP product in the market is JD AdWords. 
other one is people soft and seabell or leaves and sweet these four are erp applications and these are some other enterprise applications hyperion primavera this is how we have many other erp applications when you talk about jd adwords the jd adwords is offering the solutions in these areas supply chain management financials project management asset life cycle manufacturing when you talk about people soft they have solution for supply chain management, HCM, human capital management, financials, okay, supplier relationship management, etc. Siebel, CRM solution, okay, ERM solution, and PRM solution. These are the different areas where they have a products from the Siebel vendor. When you talk about Oracle eBusiness Suite, they, are, they have a solution for SCM, CRM, and financials projects and uh, there are many other applications where they have a solutions the hyperion is very famous for planning and budgeting and reporting financial reporting it's a tool separate product okay the hyperion we don't call it as erp but it is a application which can be used by any organization to manage their planning and budgeting as well as reporting and primavera for project portfolio management if you want to do the project related scheduling and all it's the best product in the market so this is how we have a number of products now when you look at these all erp applications and enterprise applications the each product may be specialized in one or two or three areas but there is no one erp products in the market which is very much specialized in all the areas which the product is offering. Let's talk about JD Edwards. JD Edwards is offering the solution for all these areas, but it is more or less famous for supply chain management process. And of course, there are a few other areas also where you can, when you compare with other products, you can identify they are doing really good. And when you talk about PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft is very famous for HCM, Human Capital Management. And even PeopleSoft is offering supply chain management and financial management. When you compare PeopleSoft with other applications, you can see the PeopleSoft is good for HCM application, human capital management, or say HRMS. And Siebel is famous for CRM. And Oracle eBusiness Suite is famous for financials. Hyperion is famous for reporting. Primavera is famous for project portfolio management. If you find that different ERPs are specialized for different areas, if any client is going to implement ERP application for their company, which ERP they have to choose? Okay, that's a big challenge. If they choose Oracle eBusiness Suite, that is good for financials, but that is not great product for their HCM applications. And that is not a great product for to manage this CRM, customer relationship management related application that may not be, that may not offer a great product for their supply chain management process. And Oracle eBusiness Suite may not help to the clients to have a better reporting, same as a high period financial reporting. And uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite may not provide project portfolio management, which Primavera is offering. So this is how. Now what clients are doing is, what is their primary area based on that they are choosing the ERP. The other areas, other solutions also they are going with the same ERP. Otherwise, if they want to get best solution from the different ERP application, that will become big challenge for the company. How it will become challenge? The first point is they have to take the license from the different ERP vendors. Again, all those products they have to integrate and they have to take care of that integrations and maintenance. It would be costing a lot for the enterprises. All the time, there will be risk since different ERP products should have interaction and there will be a big challenge. So to manage such kind of ERP products, since different ERPs are offering different areas of solutions as a specialized. So that is the reason what Oracle is. Oracle acquired many ERP products in the market. Okay, Oracle acquired JD AdWords and Oracle acquired PeopleSoft ERP, Oracle acquired Siebel, 
Prag Lebensmittel Sweet is their own product, and they acquired Primavera, they acquired Hyperion, they acquired many other ERP products and enterprise applications and many technologies also. After acquiring what they did is, say for example, from JD AdWords, whatever the applications are specialized, okay, which are really famous in the market for from JD AdWords, they taken those applications. Say some part of SCM solution they taken from the JD AdWords, and from PeopleSoft they taken HCM solution, and from Cbill they taken the CRM solution. From Oracle eBusiness Suite they taken the financials. From Primavera they taken planning and budgeting and uh, this reporting. Okay. Sorry, from Primavera they taken project portfolio management, project scheduling, and from Hyperion they taken the planning and budgeting and reporting. So by taking best areas, best solutions from the different ERP and enterprise applications, they built okay the applications called as fusion applications. When you talk about fusion applications, the fusion applications are not built by Oracle from the scratch. The fusion applications are legacy of different ERP applications. Just they picked which ERP is doing good in which area. That area they selected, and those all the ERP applications they just integrated. And here and there they did small enhancements and they introduced some new features also. But the complete product, when you look into that, max you could say 90% of the product is legacy of other ERP applications which are acquired by Oracle. That's the meaning of fusion applications. So when you are working on the fusion applications, if you go to financials, you see as a fusion financial application only. You don't see screens what you see in the Oracle eBusiness Suite. They converted the screens and functionalities, whatever you see there, they converted the forms into web pages. Now the, the fusion applications you see completely web-based applications. Same as EBS, you don't see a single form also. So in the same way, the JD AdWords people of C will take any other ERP applications or any other tools or different applications. Everything what you see in the fusion applications, all are web-based only. So that's how you could see the fusion applications. If you are going to use HCM applications from the fusion, which are legacy of PeopleSoft, in the fusion applications, you'll see as a fusion HCM only. You don't see that is a PeopleSoft HCM or Siebel CRM and all. But just to understand this point, we are going through these details. But once you see any application, the fusion application, that we call it as fusion application. But what is the background, how they built or how they created this fusion application, this is what we have to understand. Any questions on this point, please? Any uh, when you talk about when you talk about Primavera uh, or a project kind of things, so invoices coming from the project uh, to financials, all that uh, you will discuss or uh, that will be separate? See. <clears throat> If you want to understand a Primavera or say PPM project portfolio management, we have to configure that project costing and billing applications. Then only you can understand the integration. See, from inventory, you can move the cost to projects. From purchasing, you can move the cost to projects. From payables, you can move the cost to payables. And you, what are the billing you do in the project billing application that you can interface to receivables? And what are the costs you have in the project costing that you can interface to fixed assets? That's how we have integrations. Okay, but if you want to understand that, we have to implement those. We have to set up the costing billing application, otherwise, you cannot understand the integration. But when we are going through this P2P cycle, if you want to see where that we have those integration points that I'll take you through what information we have to provide when you create the uh, requisition or purchase orders or invoice creation time, where will be tagging project related details so that that can be interfaced to respect to the project within the project accounting application. That I can just touch base if you want to see. But those we cannot do, right? That is a completely separate product. 
the integrations we cannot execute. Since we are going to work on the financials, the SEM is tightly integrated with the finance. That is the reason we are going to cover P2 window to the cycles. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Please try to cover whatever is possible, like for the project. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. When you create so invoice, the, if the invoice yes. is related to project invoice, okay, what details, what additional attributes we have to set, that I'll be covering, if you want to see. In fact, at the time of preparing the requisition itself, I mean, we can... Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Project. I'll, take, I'll touch base those points sure. also, if you want to see. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so Lakshman, I have I have a technical question. Like as you said, the Oracle e business suit uh, forms and reports were converted to web forms, right? So, if someone has any uh, customer, no, 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 one second, one second. Uh, forms and reports, I didn't say. Only whatever the forms we have, where we can capture the data, those forms are converted to web pages. Reports, those remain as reports only. Okay. So if there is any customized form uh, developed by, like if there is an, in the e-business e application suit, that yeah. also needs to be converted to a web form. Uh, so it does not support uh, the forms as such. Uh, by yeah. application. The forms and one more point you are saying, if there is any form, customized form in EBS, whether that can be converted into Fusion or not, whether it has to be converted as a web page or whether we can take it as, as it is into uh, Fusion. To understand one po the point, so before that, whether the upgrade, I mean, convert, uh, what we can say, the migration is possible or not from the EBS to Fusion, we have to understand. If any client is using EBS applications, if they want to move to Oracle Fusion applications or call it as Oracle Fusion Cloud applications, there is no option to upgrade from that EBS to Fusion applications. Okay, the move from EBS to cloud, you have to do as a re-implementation. If say client is using ABC application, if they want to use Oracle application, what sort of practice we follow, the same we have to execute in case of when client is moving from EBS to Fusion applications. EBS we have to treat as a legacy and we have to implement Fusion applications. Okay, so uh, there is no conversion for, uh, in a utility kind of thing available. No, no, no. You it cannot upgrade. You cannot upgrade from the EBS to Fusion. You have to do as a fresh implementation. Okay, got it. Future Oracle may come up with some utility, as you mentioned, to upgrade how we are upgrading within the EBS from older version to latest versions. But as of now, no. Okay, got are, uh, if, if, if you are uh, with a 12.2.7, anything that is anything, it uh -huh. could be you are no, a very, very latest version of EBS, you cannot upgrade because in the cloud, there are many things changed. Okay, in the fusion applications, many things got changed. They introduced middleware and how things can be managed compared to EBS, they changed. That is the reason it is not possible to upgrade okay so within the ebs if you are able to upgrade from one version to older version to latest version there are no much changes hardly they might have changed added some new functionality in, if not one or other application there might be small enhancements okay there may be a few new features so that will allow you are not changing the architecture you are not changing many things in the latest version that is the reason that upgrade is possible but here they change a lot so that is the reason that the EBS environment is totally different from the the fusion environment since the environments the arc structure and the technologies what they are using how they are managing that administration part of that applications how they are dealing with the functional part to so configuration and etc all these areas things got changed that is the reason the upgrade cannot be synced away from EBS to cloud. We'll, we'll see once we get into application, you can notice all those points. So why that is not possible, we'll be able to understand. 
okay but you can actually develop a customized application like like we have a customized yeah. order management application I, I got so, you i got you yes we can do but when we are, when if client is going to use this fusion applications they can choose which cloud they require okay which cloud subscription they require based on that you can decide whether customizations can be done or not that will I'll, i'm going to discuss in today's session itself okay once we discuss that point uh, we'll get more clarity on that whether we can do the customizations or not if we can do where we can do if we cannot do where we cannot do those will understand yeah any other questions here please fine so that's all about a meaning of fusion applications now we'll see what is the difference between on premise and cloud okay now if you talk about ebs applications or actually ebs applications so most of the clients are using the ebs applications as a on premise on premise means okay they'll maintain their own servers on premise servers in case of on premise how things can be managed if any company wants to use oracle ebs applications they have to buy the server okay they have to buy the server they have to purchase the physical server and the server need to be placed in the some physical location and which applications the client wants to use they have to take the license they have to purchase the license for from oracle for the respective application say they want to implement financials scm and hrms in ebs for those three areas of application they have to take the license after taking the license the client required to have dba the client has to deploy dba team who will be installing the applications in the server after installing the servers need to be managed by client dba and if the client wants to upgrade to latest version say the implementation is done the company is using that oracle applications after 2 years 3 years or after 4 or 5 years if they want to upgrade to latest version the upgrade should be handled by the customer team only okay the customer owned upgrades they should take the responsibility of upgrading those application from older version to latest version and since the server is servers will be placed in the some phys physical location user point of view the performance wise they can find little bit poor that means say the client is doing the business in india and the us servers are placed in us the india users when they are trying to connect to the server uh, all the ways the users has to connect to the server through network there could be some traffic in the network a user will submit the request all the ways the request go should go and hit the server which is physically placed in the us location and again server should respond and that's how the user will have some sort of inconvenience in terms of performance so since servers are placed out in the placed in the different locations the two physical locations so user experience would be little bit poor so these are the points we have to consider if any company is going to have their own servers if any company is going to have their own servers and if they are going to manage their applications for which application they are taking the license from oracle that we call as on premise servers okay so this is how things can be managed in case of on premise so based on this slide any questions from anyone please we'll talk about how this the same in case of cloud how it is different and we'll discuss but by looking at this slide and the points whatever we discuss based on that any questions from anyone please no questions now let's see any 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 possibility to download the software for on premise yes i have hardware available i can i can i can install it you you are talking, I'm about, talking about fusion yes, software or cloud soft fusion software fusion on premise yeah fusion you can go and download from oracle e delivery but now oracle focusing on cloud only not on premise solution so you have software available in oracle e delivery to download 
but that is not very latest version of fusion applications. Okay. Help, any help for uh, any sort of uh, uh, previous uh, version as well, just to do the practice. No, I didn't understand. Suppose if I want to install it on premise, is there any possibility that I mean you can help me to download this fusion? You can go to Oracle eDelivery and you can download. And again, you need rack server. Normally, your laptops with high configuration, desktops with high configuration doesn't work. You need rack servers. I have OD available with me, version 2. What is that? So I guess uh, Oracle Database Appliance, OD. Okay. That is available in our office. So I can, I can install on that. It's, it has... 226 GB RAM and it's a very high end engineering box from Oracle. Okay, okay. So if you can, yeah, if you can help me just to download this uh, on premise, though it might be an older version, but it will help me to do the practice. Yeah, yeah. If you if you have a like required credentials, you can go and log in, and you will be finding just there will be classification of the products. So you can select Oracle Fusion applications and you can download. But you need. Uh, Oracle Fusion DBA. Okay, you cannot install simply. You, you need uh, some experience Oracle Fusion DBA. They can help you to get installed in your own server. Any any document from your side? Nothing. For, it's not a this. simple task. It's not a simple task by doing by seeing to do. Okay. It's a big process because I did because because I did by myself uh, EBS 12.2.2 uh, then I upgraded to 12.2.6 and then to 2.7. Okay, so, okay, done, done. Okay. That's a so, uh, totally different story. You can contact the person who is working as a Fusion DBA. They can guide you. Okay, I'm not expert in that installation. No functional or technical consultants you can find as expert to do that. You might have done. Uh, for EBS, but uh, it's for Fusion, it's totally different. So middleware and all these you have to install. There will be a number of components. You have to take care of all those in the process of uh, cloud Fusion. Even the people who are working as Oracle apps DBA, they cannot do the Fusion installation. They have to be expertised, then only they can do. That's how it is a little bit complex. Okay, so, so for the yeah, sake of uh, talk about our training. area, yeah, please. Lakshman, um, so for the sake of the training, you're going to give us a training instance, right? Um, where we can access the uh, training instance from your server uh, to practice uh, okay. throughout the sessions, right? Yes, you'll get cloud uh, cloud instance access for your practice. And how long is that going to be? We'll, we'll provide for three months. If at all you require, we can extend one more month or two more months. Okay. So most of us are, uh, I don't know about others, but I'm a PeopleSoft audience. So PeopleSoft has an architecture I where we yeah, talked about. Sure, yeah. I, I got uh, what you are trying to sh share with me. Uh, better we can take these points at the end of the session. Now we are in the four discussions. Let's focus on that. Okay. Just discuss, discussing, if you have any questions, let me know. We'll talk on that. Otherwise, any sort of questions, we'll see in the end of the session. Okay. Yeah, fine. Thank you. So any questions on this point, please, on my servers? Okay. Fine. No. Now we'll see what does it mean by cloud computing? How that cloud servers can be managed? So what companies will do is, if you take example of Oracle, so they maintain the physical servers. Okay, they maintain the physical servers. With the help of physical servers, they'll create the virtual servers. They'll create the virtual servers by using the concept called as virtualization. It's completely related to cloud computing. But we are trying to understand, okay, in case of Fusion Cloud, what servers we are going to use. Oracle creates virtual servers by using the physical servers. These virtual servers, they will give to their customers. 
if you are to use oracle fusion applications oracle will provide virtual server so that means you no need to maintain your own servers when you are going to use oracle fusion applications they'll create one virtual server as per your requirement which applications you want to use for your company by including those applications they'll create virtual server the virtual servers they'll provide to us those we can access and we can use when you talk about this virtual servers or say cloud servers what we have to understand the servers are virtual servers not physical servers in case of on premise servers should be servers are physical and should be placed in specific location but when you talk about virtual servers we cannot place virtual servers in physical locations virtual servers would be available internet as a source okay internet as a source and you don't need to take the license when you are going to use fusion applications from oracle so just you have to take the subscription okay in case of license you have to pay huge amount but if you are going to take the subscription you have to pay very less amount so which applications you want to use how many users are going to work on that application based on the applications and user count you have to pay to oracle as a subscription then they'll give the access to applications through virtual servers you can access and no installation of applications since you are not taking the license you don't have any server you don't need to do any installation of fusion applications also the installation part everything will be taken care by oracle cloud dbas so directly they'll provide the virtual server within the virtual servers you can find the applications also which we want and servers maintenance by oracle dba team here oracle dba team means oracle cloud dba team any db activities will be managed by oracle cloud db say you want to apply some patch there is some issue with the instance whatever the applications you are going to use you want to apply some patch or you want to do any sort of activity which can be done by dba in that case in case of cloud servers or this cloud computing the dbas we can i mean oracle will help us with a dba related task we no need to maintain our own dba being a client and auto upgrades if you are going to use cloud servers which are virtual servers if oracle is going to come up with a new release you no need to upgrade as our with our own responsibility oracle will take care of if they are going to come up with a new version they upgrade Uh, applications with the latest version and high performance how that virtual servers will be available for us say for example you are running the business as a client you have your business operations in india and us okay and say in india and us and china so in these three countries we have your business now whatever you are going to do so if you take this example Your, your client is operating the business in india us and china so in that case where virtual servers would be available we discuss virtual servers would be available internet as a source wherever you have a if you have internet connectivity you can think your servers are available there how how that is possible so if you take subscription for oracle fusion applications from oracle what oracle will do is they will keep these virtual servers to be available in our nearest data centers so if you are going to run the business in these three countries say oracle has their data centers in india us and china so the virtual server which they created for us they'll be keeping available in their data centers in india us and china if india user is trying to connect to that server the url will identify the user is from which country if user is from india it will connect that user request to nearest data center for india users nearest data center is india data center which is owned by oracle so the user will be routed to the nearest data center virtual server and if user is trying to connect to the fusion applications from us system will identify okay the url will identify from where user is trying to connect and what is the nearest data center that's how it would be routing for us user it will connect to 
us data center virtual server for a china user from if they are trying to connect to the applications it will route to the data center which is very close to this that user location and only one virtual server will will be created by oracle but that replication they will do in the different servers and all those virtual servers only one virtual server they'll replicate the same server availability in the different data centers but those replication whatever they do those all will be in the sync okay so they'll just keep that virtual server resource availability in the different different data centers that is the reason if you are working from india so the virtual server would be available in india whatever the data center we have from oracle that's the reason from wherever you are working you can think your server is available there there itself if you have access to internet so these are the points we have to understand when we talk about cloud servers okay those are virtual servers you cannot place in any location because those are not physical so where you can where you can find the virtual servers or cloud servers internet as a source how you can say internet as a source because they'll keep available that virtual servers almost everywhere wherever we required based on the data centers whatever they have okay and uh, subscription we have to take from oracle we don't need to take license which is very cheaper the subscription is very cheaper compared to the license licensing and no installation because oracle itself will provide the virtual servers the maintenance and all will be taken care by oracle only we no need to do anything and the dbas and all the dba uh, activities also you can take the support from oracle only we don't we don't know, we don't need to maintain the dedicated dbas how we maintain for ebs applications in case of on premise auto upgrade since you are using the virtual servers which are provided by oracle if oracle is going to come up with the latest version they upgrade to latest version automatically that means auto upgrade is possible in case of cloud cloud okay because the virtual servers everything will be controlled by oracle only they'll take care of maintenance and all and high performance since these virtual servers they'll keep available in the nearest data centers for the client users that is the reason user experience would be very rich okay again within the cloud we have a different options those we are going to see in the next slide but what are the points we discuss we are discussing here within this slide any questions from anyone please uh, hi lakshman uh, this is bupal please. Uh, yeah you are saying virtual server is not a physical server right i mean it doesn't exist in physical location exactly. but how you are how you are relating that to data center because data center is a physical location right you are saying uh, virtual server will be available in data center yeah see Then, uh, i how, got you i got you uh -huh. how these virtual servers are created with the help of physical server only oh you mean to say that uh, physical server will be available in uh, each country data center they can maintain anywhere they can maintain mm -hmm. okay the physical mm -hmm. they can maintain anywhere but mm -hmm. virtual servers availability they will maintain in the different data centers with the support of other physical servers okay okay these mm -hmm. are actually created by physical server right mm -hmm. yeah however they created these virtual server maintenance can be done by other physical servers which are nothing but other data centers mm -hmm. oh, okay they'll keep these virtual servers live in the different country with the help of their data centers where they'll maintain big missions mm -hmm. okay that, that is a point okay thank you yeah any other questions somebody is unmuted we are getting background noise any questions please okay no questions yeah okay we'll move on quick question actually please so looking at all the advantages that cloud servers have is there a reason why ebs or why oracle is still supporting the the physical or the premise based applications or is is oracle actually pushing everything to go towards the cloud servers yeah <clears throat> 
see uh, the cloud is the cloud if somebody is going with the cloud that will benefit lot for the organization the first point is there no need to invest too much for server infrastructure they no need to buy their servers okay another point is they no need to maintain the technical resource here technical resource in the sense the network admins and security experts and uh, they don't need to worry about the risk about the servers server maintenance is not required they don't need dbs and all and again you don't need to take the license this and all you can save as a client you can save and uh, you'll have a better experience with the cloud servers when you are using that application for your organization otherwise if it is on premise always the challenge okay so if you have one dedicated dba for your company say the dba is going to be on leave for four days so when the dba is going to be on the leave for four days if server will go down what you have to do everything you have to stop okay and before that you have to invest a lot to buy the physical servers and you have to take right. so security network related all these you have to manage on your own right so right how it makes perfect sense. but are there any disadvantages of having virtual servers like uh, is there any downturn is there anything that no 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 okay 99% okay. 99.999 Okay, that's the assurance Oracle is giving. That's true also. I never seen so far as so so and so instance is down, which is allocated for client. If we are going to request Oracle to apply some patch or etc., in that case, if really required, they'll down and they'll do that. Otherwise, no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But there are few points which you have to understand. If it's a virtual server, what are the disadvantages and advantages? Those we, we we are going to see now. Okay. If it is a cloud, what are the advantages and disadvantages? We are going to understand. Yeah. Uh, I Lakshman, this is Sunil. I have a question. Like, how do they manage the customized code? Then, like, if I have any reports created. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming to that point. I'm coming to that point. We are we have a different options there. We can understand where you can do reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Please just on these points or related points, any questions, please. Hey, Lakshman, this is a uh, Vinket. Yeah, I'll make yeah. this question quick. Yeah. Uh, taking back to the initial points you mentioned, uh, you said that fusion is basically a platform that integrates with or that interfaces to these legacy applications. Uh, my question is. Is the Oracle HCM a homegrown product or no, no, no. Uh, is it going to use PeopleSoft? PeopleSoft. As these, they take in the PeopleSoft solution into Fusion after acquisition. All right. Thanks. That's my question. Okay. Great. Fine. Done. So, <clears throat> if any company is going to use Oracle Fusion applications, okay, and let me talk about. The meaning of fusion applications here. We have to understand. When you say Oracle Fusion Financials Applications, the term is Oracle Fusion Cloud Financials. If you are going to use Oracle Fusion applications in on-premise, you can call financials as Oracle Fusion financials. If you are going to use this Oracle Fusion, Fina Oracle Fusion application product through cloud, then you will be calling as Oracle Fusion cloud financials. The same way anything. In any application, if you are including the term, the meaning is you are using that applications through virtual servers which are provided by Oracle. You are not to use with the help of virtual servers okay. which are provided by Oracle. You have your own server within your own server. If you are going to install Oracle Fusion applications, you should call it as Oracle Fusion application, Fusion financial applications only. You should not include the term called as cloud. The simple point is 
whether you have to include the cloud or not that totally depends how applications are deployed where those are deployed the applications are deployed in your own server don't call it as cloud if your applications are deployed and managed by oracle call it as cloud that's a big difference between oracle fusion application fusion financials applications and oracle fusion cloud applications it, it is applicable for any application if you want to include cloud for any application that should be from oracle only through virtual servers and if you if you are not including that means that is your own server in terms of functionality there won't be any difference you may install the product in your own server or else you may access that product from the oracle own servers which are nothing but virtual servers but product remains same but where that is placed based on that you can use a naming convention that's it any questions on this point please so what is people soft called in um, oracle cloud people soft from people soft in people soft we have finance also but the finance solution they, they didn't take into fusion the people soft they take an hcm human capital management Right. What about overall perspective? Like um, people soft has financials. No, no. That's what what I'm I'm within the infusion, you can see HCM solution which they taken from people soft. That's all. And what about the financials? So, what Finance terminology are you? What are the business suite? So, people soft financials is now Oracle. e business suite right ah uh, no 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 wrong people soft finance and oracle e business finance both are different two different vendors in past later oracle acquired people soft but still those are two separate product related solutions so what is the title for people soft financials so that is people soft finance only that is there as a people soft pro product that is not there in the fusion so are you saying that oracle cloud doesn't have financials it's just has hcm oracle cloud has a financials which they taken from oracle e business suite so it's a cloud financials application yeah. right once exactly. after taking that finance from oracle e business suite to fusion that we call as cloud finance when we call as cloud finance if the servers are managed by oracle in that case only we call as cloud finance otherwise simply we call as fusion finance okay got it thank you done thanks any other questions here please yeah lakshman uh, you when you say they have oracle has just integrated uh, like specialized modules from all of these erps into a uh, fusion so Correct. like technically uh, those must be on different platforms right or technical different technologies yeah. so how did they, they integrate they built a common platform okay they built common platform and on that they deployed okay. and all Okay, so the user experience is same for all of the modules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you will see in the same screens and same colors, everything same experience when you are using the user interface and everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. All will be running on the same server. Yeah. Fine. Any other questions here to understand? Mr. Lakshman, between these two. No questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lakshman, uh, what type of uh, uh, reports are available in? Uh, we'll we'll see that future. once we get into product, we can understand. Okay, those are very specific. Okay, here even that sort of information you can find uh, from one of the slide which you are going to see. Okay, so that that we can see in the other after maybe after five minutes. Yeah. now here the point is if any company wants to use oracle fusion applications from oracle okay so that we call as cloud if any company wants to take the license they can take and they can install the product in their servers in that case there is no cloud concept so that is on premise 
So if any client company wants to use Oracle Fusion applications and they are, want to have access to cloud servers or say virtual servers, you can call it as virtual servers or cloud servers. In that case, what are the different options are available for customers in the market? Okay, so those simply you can call as cloud flavors or cloud options. Basically, these are the three different services Oracle will provide for the organizations who wants to use Oracle Fusion applications through cloud. The first one is SaaS. SaaS stands for Software as a Service. The second one is PaaS. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service. And the third one is IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service. SaaS, PaaS, IaaS. These are the different services Oracle provides their customers. Not only Oracle, take any cloud computing company. Now Oracle is one of the cloud, one of the biggest cloud computing company in the market because Oracle acquired cloud technologies also from the different vendors in the cloud vendors in the market. Okay, we discussed Oracle acquired other ERP products in the market. Along with the other ERP products, since Oracle, okay, made a plan of providing this Oracle applications through cloud. They, part, they acquired cloud technologies also from the key vendors in the market. So any cloud company offers these three services for their customers. In the same way Oracle also offers these three services since they are, that is a, they are providing the cloud services. SaaS, PaaS, IaaS. We'll go one by one. What is the meaning of SaaS, PaaS, IaaS? If you have any questions, we'll discuss there itself. Okay. The first one. The first one is, we'll see what is a SaaS. As we discussed, SaaS stands for Software as a Service. Okay, SaaS stands for as Software as a Service. In case of, if any client is going to subscribe the cloud-based application from Oracle, they'll get access to virtual server. The virtual server will have applications, okay, will have a server. Within the server, the Oracle will install the operating system, OS operating system, and they'll install the applications that access they'll provide to the organization. Then organization, what organization can do? In case of SaaS, just they can consume. They can use that application, that's it. Here you just, let's go through all these key points, what we have to understand about SaaS. If any client is going to use SaaS-based Fusion applications, they'll get access to standard product whatever applications Oracle is developed as these they'll get they can access and they can use they can get access to that application the implementation team will implement the business will use it and if you have access to SaaS based instance okay our product anything you can call ideally we call as the, the products all uh, uh, whatever the products so we get as access that simply we call as instance. So whatever the products access we are getting from Oracle, those we can use as it is. If you want to build new functionality, you cannot build it in case of SaaS. Okay, if you have access to SaaS based instance, you cannot build any new functionality. Customization means creating something new. The functionality customizations we cannot do in case of SaaS subscription. And reports customization. If it is a SaaS subscription from Oracle, in SaaS you will be able to create the custom reports. That is a possible. And if you want to integrate any third party applications with our finance or SEM or any other applications which are part of the SaaS, yes, that is a possible. If you are a SaaS customer, you can upgrade automatically. Whenever Oracle comes up with the latest version, you just you have to raise SR to Oracle. That's it. They'll upgrade automatically. Matter of one day time. Oracle will take care of. And in case of SaaS, you will get support from Oracle Cloud DBA team. We no need to maintain any DBA team because we are not maintaining the server. Server is managed by Oracle only. Okay. So that is the reason any sort of DBA help we can take from Oracle. So this is how you can just manage with the SaaS. In case of SaaS, 
you will get access to standard product which is offered by oracle and you cannot change any functionality you cannot do any enhancements you cannot change existing functionality you cannot create new functionality okay and but you can create the custom reports as per our requirement you can integrate you can connect any third party applications with the oracle fusion cloud applications and you can oracle will take care of auto upgrade if required any latest versions from oracle they will upgrade automatically but just you have to raise sr to oracle and any sort of dba help will be taken care by oracle cloud dba team so this is a this is all about saas subscription if any company is going to subscribe saas based instance access for specific applications these are applicable okay where we can do the customizations and all we will discuss in the next slide but this is what applicable in case of saas most of the companies who are using the oracle fusion cloud applications they are using saas only more than 95% okay you could say 97 or 98% of companies are using saas based subscriptions only the reason is auto upgrade okay again which clients are using this saas based subscription most of the small and mid sized companies are using the saas based subscription this is what we have to understand about saas any questions on this please can we create any uh, custom tables if required <clears throat> when you say you cannot build any new functionality that is not that also not allowed because if you are building some new functionality then only you require custom tables so that is not possible you cannot create custom tables or you cannot create custom schemas in case of saas in other option that is possible that will discuss but here no and the database like you know is a standard or it will be like enterprise standard only standard database only you get okay only you can query and see the data which is available in the database required that, that means we cannot touch the database like yes in yes okay yes. in case by itself i mean uh, from the service provider they don't allow us yeah they don't allow they don't give the permissions so back end nothing is possible suppose if 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 anything i need to do any changes like the date has has gone by mistake different or something for any transaction uh, okay so if and the page, uh, see simple from which page you enter the data within that page if the field is editable and all you can go and do that is only the option directly you cannot perform any operations on database to modify to create etc etc for example like in order management by mistake i took a different customer than it was supposed to and i booked the order now i cannot change the customer or some i'm yeah. just giving an example yeah. i'm just giving an example any any anything if i need to change into a cell uh, order from back end you cannot I... change anything simple point i can understand the example simple point is from back end you cannot do any modifications that's it if the front end page allows you to do you can do it from back end by directly connecting to the database you cannot do anything that's it it's possible like 95% okay okay thank you yep uh, lakshman i have one uh, question you are saying 95% of the customers are uh, using saas right but uh, right. if you take org ebs most of the clients who use org ebs Uh, they do like uh, customizations right most of them you know they read customization so how do you think those customers will be able to use saas application yeah saas they don't use they'll go with another option called as a pass we'll talk on that. yeah but uh, yeah but most of them in the uh, market who use arc lbs Uh, did uh, customization right i mean uh, Correct. I, i don't get it how you know 90% are using saas now Yeah, in that case, I mean, they go with the pass. Uh, I'm not telling there is no option for them. Yes, uh, they want to do the. Still, if they want to continue those customizations, they can go with the SaaS. Or else, they don't uh, want to continue with those customizations. They want to manage those customizations through some workarounds. Since the great benefit is, whenever Oracle will come up with a new release, they may release some new functionality, etc. If they want to take that advantage and smooth 
instance maintenance etc they'll go with a SaaS only yes if they have customizations they have an option they can go with a pass so there, there is a customer who is using the uh, EBS application they want to move to fusion cloud applications in that case the same customizations they want to continue in the fusion also they choose pass pass subscription will allow to do the functionality customization not only specific functionality if they want to develop new application in the fusion applications to use along with the oracle provided fusion applications yes that is also possible but only the disadvantage with the pass subscription is pass instance is upgrades you have to take care in case of ebs if oracle is come up with a new release what we have to do oracle is not going to help anything they'll provide the patches we have to get ready with the approach of how to upgrade we have to get the dba they have to apply the patches the test environment we do the testing and we run the pre-upgrade reports okay and we'll do all the testing we'll identify what are the bugs and we'll fix those bugs and once we get understanding how that is impacting then we'll apply the patch and the production instance and uh, we'll cross check any bugs are resulting because of whatever we have seen in the test environment we'll run the post upgrade reports is everything man should be managed by our team okay so again when you do the customizations when you are upgrading you have to look after those customizations also which uh, customizations can be invited by the latest version which customizations won't sync with the new version and all these we have to take care and those necessary changes we have to do for those customizations whenever you upgrade to latest version if required these are all need to be managed by our team in case of pass also same applicable okay in case of pass also you'll get access to standard product but the pass environment will allow you to do the functionality related customizations anyway reports you can customize third party integrations are possible the disadvantage is if you take subscription today you may implement within six months after six months you started using after one year oracle came up with the latest version now you cannot upgrade automatically you have to do a, that as a small project you have to get the team and uh, you have to work on many things and you have to do oracle why oracle is not upgrading reason what you customized what is the functionality how it impact oracle is not aware of the customizations which you are doing that is the reason since you are doing the customizations in the pass environment auto upgrade is not applicable for pass environments so that is the reason most of the clients are using SaaS. very less customers that to big customers say if the client has operations in multiple countries or the business what they do that is a very complex process they may have a business in one country only but in terms of nature of business process it need lot of customizations okay some custom driven process in that case they'll go with the pass and pass will allow them to do the customizations that's how they can use this pass based subscription any questions on this point please so a customer uh can choose SAS or PASS or YAS, but they are independent, right? There is no dependency per se. No dependency. In the sense, so I can have SAS with the Oracle, but my YAS with Amazon. Oh, no, Infrastructure. No, 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 no. There is one point. Like Oracle, Amazon is one of the cloud vendor. Okay, see here, in case of SAS, Oracle is providing the application. Do you think uh, Amazon will provide the Oracle Fusion applications along with this SaaS subscription? No. I, right, but uh, can the infrastructure be from Amazon and uh, the software from Oracle? Yeah, in that case, you have to take the license from Oracle for Fusion applications. Okay, take license for Fusion applications and take only server hosting service from the Amazon, install that applications in Amazon server, okay? That will work as a cloud because Amazon, whatever the server hosting they'll provide, that is also cloud. Virtual server only they will provide. 
right? Take license from Oracle, install in that. In that case, the DBA part Oracle is not going to help because the Amazon is not in Oracle control, right? Right. That's a big issue we'll face. You can do that, but in that case, it is the same as on-premise, but is your own, it's, but not on-premise, that is a cloud, which is owned by you, where you take in that uh, hosting service from some other vendors and you are taking the application from a rocket. So, so in essence, if I want to have infrastructure as well as the software, I better go with only Oracle. Exactly. Two different vendors. That happens in SaaS and PaaS. I guess you can ho you can take a virtual virtual machine from Oracle and host it in Amazon. No need of doing all installation and all because it will be a very no 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 that is not possible. No. Okay. Okay. That is not possible. Taking virtual machine means what? Nothing. Okay. They cannot take virtual machine. When they are taking the virtual machine, they will be hosting and everything. Again, they don't need to take from the Amazon. Take software from Oracle. No, virtual machine will be in a form of file only. It just need to upload it to no, Amazon. No, that is a user interface. Uh, we are talking about virtual machine. No, no, no. The, when you say virtual machine here, we are talking about server virtual machine. Okay. That, that should have a system resource. Okay, that, that you cannot do, taking some virtual mission, okay, from Oracle and uh, installing. You can take the products from Oracle, application license you can take, those you can download from Oracle, those you can install in the Amazon AWS. That is possible. But that creates a lot many challenges, okay. You have to maintain your own DB even it is cloud. Fine. Any questions on SaaS or PaaS? Yeah. So, so Lakshman, in all of these options, you can uh, you can choose uh, to subscribe specific modules, right? Yes. It is possible. The specific modules in the sense. So. Like I I do not want auto management. Uh, so. No no no. Module wise, you cannot choose for finance SaaS for a CM PaaS. No. What are the applications you are going to use for all the applications you need SaaS or PaaS you have to choose. You cannot manage no. finance in SaaS, SCM in the PaaS. All right, but if I use, say, so if I choose a PaaS, even there I, I will be, I, I should be able to choose a specific models if only. You, uh, anyone, SaaS or PaaS, you will take the subscription for which applications you require, that's it. Okay. Okay, only the difference is in SaaS you don't get a flexibility of doing the customizations which is possible in the PaaS. That's the difference. And upgrades uh, also. Yeah. Uh, Lakshman, uh, you know, in case of PaaS, uh, do we get uh, access to database? Yes. So, so I mean, is it is it second, part of... Let, uh, let me talk on that point still. If you have any question, I'll take. So in case of SaaS or PaaS, you'll get database access. Okay, in SaaS also you'll get database access where you can query the data and fetch the data. No, no, I mean I mean to say like if you can use a SQL developer and Toad. Yeah, you know? I'm coming. I'm that... coming to all those points. That's what I said. Don't mind. So I'll sit, mm -hmm. trigger that point. I'm talking about it. Let me talk about what we have to understand. Still, if you have any questions left, we can we'll discuss. Okay. So in SaaS, mm -hmm. you can connect to the database and you can write the queries. From where you can write the queries? The queries we have to write within the application environment only, okay? Within the application environment only. You cannot connect with a SQL developer or Toad or some third party tools. So the environment they'll provide within the application only. So primarily that is a BA page, BA catalog page. From there you can write the SQL queries. But in case of SAS, you can fetch the data and you can see. But in case of PaaS, you can, since we are going to create the new functionalities, okay, customizations you can do. In PaaS, you can create custom schemas, you can create the custom tables, and you can just do the required uh, changes or anything to those data what you are creating. So that flexibility you will get 
but everything you have to do within the application environment only you cannot connect to the tool oh you mean to say in case of pass also we cannot connect to through the tool code you cannot connect and no access through code and how we can create a table custom table uh, uh, in case of pass right create so, statement yeah. right create statement no, uh -huh. see how because in the toad you have a user interface right there is space like where you can write the query right the same user interface you can see within the application they are providing separate page from where you can write the queries statements as well statements commands i mean if you need to write a plc call package uh, can we write there you plc call package in that environment you can write anything can you query write over there can create uh, customized tables in yes in pass, pass right? you can create okay fast you cannot so how it works like we uh, we have access to database and we can write and compile it on our own right or we have to use oracle dbs on that no 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 see when you are writing the queries and all you don't need dbs support right no queries i'm okay but uh, we are writing a new code customized code in that case okay see if any sort of in case of ebs wherever we need dba support okay so in the same scenario here you can talk to oracle dba to do that so take simple example in case of ebs if you want to install the printer who who has to do that activity who I mean, who has to done the printer installation or say printer conf configuration case of EBS? Okay, whose responsibility is printer installation? Sir, so admin. Yeah, so sir, admin has ideally DBS do that, right? Right. So now in Fusion, we cannot do the printer installation. Oracle won't give that control to us. we have to write as sr to oracle saying that we want to install the we want to configure printer in the instance then they will ask for certain details about our printer information printer details once you provide they will do that printer configuration in the instance from there we can start connecting to the printer to print any documents so whatever can be done by dbas in case of ebs those all can be done in cloud also but by oracle cloud dba team not our own dba so in uh, so lakshman uh, just a question so in uh, uh, let's say uh, the list was oracle legacy erp for uh, in this case the printer case right what they discuss so in printer what well, if you want to configure a new printer uh, we give a new printer now ip config and if it is white listed we give the config to i mean the ip details to the uh, anand uh, can you be loud the voice is not much clear sorry okay so erp uh, so we work with for example the printer installation right uh, the uh, zebra printers is different just an uh, oracle report printers uh, so we do configurations in erp as well as the configuration file we give the ip address and the whitelist whitelisting details to the uh, dba they do configuration file setup and then do it they take care of it so in um, the uh, pass in the cloud so we need to work with the uh, the uh, oracle dbs the cloud DBA, dbs yes. uh, to yes. do that correct correct we have to work with the dba oracle cloud dba okay uh, okay i mean uh, i am okay so okay, i have uh, some questions on that i mean uh, i'll take it later but uh, yeah just uh, you yeah. can go ahead yeah sure uh, any other question lakshman yeah, lakshman is there any possible in case of pass is there any possible for any possibility for the client to have their own dba to do these upgrades and uh, patching in case of pass pass or pass no yeah. pass no no they cannot uh, client cannot have their own dba do the upgrades and uh, patch not at all possible not at all possible uh, the upgrades how we do dbs will apply the patch and will work on the rest of testing etc right so mm -hmm. if yeah. you are is fast customer and if you want to upgrade then you have to raise a sar to oracle and this is what your plan then dba will come into the picture they'll 
be in the our contact and we'll keep in touch with them and we'll be asking them to apply the patch and we'll be testing any bugs and all again we'll talk to the dba of course that everything the communication takes place through sr and they'll apply the patches they'll update us again we'll be testing this is how those things can be carried out so we are allowed to do functionality customization but we do not have any uh, control over the environment sorry or data so they are allowing us to do functionality customization but uh, we do not have control over the database Correct. or uh, in the server they are not giving the entire server control just only they will allow only application related control the rest of everything will be managed by them this allows you the additional benefit as build you can build the new functionality yep yeah. any other questions here please Fine. So that's all about pass. Okay, when you take the subscription for SaaS or pass, you will get the server. Okay, with application. So in case of SaaS, you can you cannot modify that application or you cannot create something new as a uh, some functionality. In case of pass, Oracle will allow you to do any modification. It will allow you to do any sort of enhancements to existing product or creating new functionality both are possible and when you talk about ias ias stands for infrastructure as service it's very simple we'll take the server hosting only we'll buy the space access to virtual servers within that server you don't find any operating system as installed you don't find any applications inside of it just we'll take hosting service some storage space we'll buy from oracle after buying what you want to do that you can plan okay you may install any application or you may store some data you may use how you want the storage space that's all about ias when you talk about ias you don't find any oracle fusion applications by default inside of the ias hosting okay you may take ias hosting and you may take license from oracle for fusion applications those you can install in the in the ias environment that means only server will be managed by oracle the applications you can manage to manage those applications okay you can have a technical team like you can do the customizations and all but and you can have it in this case you can have a dba fusion apps dba can help you to handle all those Uh, DBA activities only space will get from Oracle through cloud virtual servers, but DBAs we can deploy and uh, we can do the customizations and patching, cloning, etc., etc. Everything can be done in case of IaaS by our own DBA. It is same as on-premise, but not on-premise. It's a cloud only, but where everything will be controlled by us since we are not taking the application from Oracle. as per our choice we can choose any application we can install and you can maintain that's the meaning of ias structure as a service so in this case i'm guessing there is no auto upgrade right first of all no application right yeah okay no application from oracle what application you are going to use oracle is not going to bother if you are going to keep that space empty oracle won't say anything they'll be just charging that's all right so you take the the infrastructure from them but you apply the cloud fusion however what happens to the upgrades so there any any upgrades that it's not getting pushed to see when you take the license from oracle for the product they never bother about where you are going to install it they given license right. you can use for say one year for example you take license for one year okay so you are you are going to install in ias or you are going to install in uh, your own server doesn't makes any difference if you have your own server you have to manage if it is in ias server part oracle will maintain but application part you have to manage whether you want to upgrade or not that's up to you right. you cannot talk to okay. me saying that i take in the license from you please upgrade no 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 we given product rest your wish how you want to correct makes sense yeah So that's all about us. Any other questions from anyone, please? Yeah, Mr. Lakshman, one question. 
Yeah. Uh, in case in case of SAS or PaaS, for example, suppose if uh, if if the headcount is like say like 500 for a small company, okay, or let's say after a period of time, if it is increases from 500 to 1000 as a headcount plus mm -hmm. for uh, SCM and for financials, let's say uh, I took it as a minimum licenses, okay. But if no, the, see, staff if is the point is point is when you are subscribing you will be subscribing for number of applications and plus for each application what is the headcount later if you want to increase you can increase can they can they can they catch us in case of sas and pass uh, like i mean we are in see, everything is in their control the they do the auditing in case of on premise we take the license yeah, yeah. okay we take the license and you can play with that. Nobody is going to see. Sometimes Oracle may conduct audit where those their people will come and audit your system. Once you take what about IaaS? But here, everything will be in their control. Definitely they'll do the auditing. You have to just, uh, you. I mean, you have to use the users for how many users you have a subscription. What IaaS? IaaS. In case of IaaS, if you are going to take the product from Oracle, okay, in that case, Oracle will have a control to server, but not to the product. Which product you are going to install, the security and all you can maintain. It is same as you are maintaining that applications in the different servers. Yes. Instead of on-premise, I'm just keeping my uh, physical host or Whatever, whatever say our virtual virtual machine. Yes. See, so, one thing. Uh, IaaS you can take from Amazon. Application license you take from Oracle. Install in that, or else instead of taking IaaS service from Amazon, take from Oracle only. The two are totally different. One quick question, Lakshman. Are you continuing the session? It is more than ninety minutes. Okay. Okay. How long it is going to be? Max ten minutes. Okay, we'll close. Uh, what, what you will be covering in next 10 minutes? Hardly, I'll take you through the course curriculum. Anyway, this video will be sharing with everyone. If it is lay, if, I mean, if you want to drop, you can go ahead. And if you have any questions, we can discuss in the next session. Since it's the first session, I think we are spending more time. Otherwise, we're supposed to stop by 9.30, short. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lakshman, <coughs> I have one quick question. Please. Uh, in uh, cloud, we have a public and a private cloud, right? Yes, yes. Can you tell me what is the difference between uh, private and uh, public? How is it different? Fine. Hmm. So private cloud and public cloud, and other one is, okay, let's talk about on the fly, no issues. We have public cloud, we have private cloud, and we have hybrid cloud. Okay. So in case of private cloud okay so what oracle will do is they'll maintain dedicated server for us in private cloud and they'll make thus i mean the connections to work in the secured private network so in the private cloud that instance what you are using that will work in your own environment, own network, your company network only that would work. And again, they will maintain the separate server for private cloud. Here are two options. You may use Oracle servers or else you may buy the, Oracle, buy the servers and you can ask Oracle to manage those servers. That's how private cloud we have to understand. When you talk about public cloud, so the instance you can access from anywhere. Okay, instance you can access from any, anywhere. And the one server, by using, as we discussed, by using one server, they'll create a number of virtual servers. They'll be giving each virtual server to different clients. And hybrid means the combination of public and private. Say, for example, you want to maintain, you want to manage financials in the private cloud. 
and SEM in the public cloud. That means SEM applications, you want to allow the users to access from any network, from any internet connected device. But the financial applications, users can connect when they are in the office, in the office network only. And again, that has you want to maintain that as with a separate server. So that's how just only the point here is the public and private only security point of view. Okay, you have to when you have a concern about the security, you have you can choose whether you need public cloud or private cloud. But in case of Oracle cloud, if you look at some existing clients who are from the banking sector, those clients are also using public cloud. That means even the public cloud Oracle made that much secure. That is the reason we no need to worry about that is a public cloud or private cloud just to understand the term meaning the public cloud means instance you can access from anywhere there is no restrictions there is no network and security I mean in terms of connecting to that if you have a user credentials you can connect from anywhere so publicly that an instance would be available private means there will be restrictions they will set restrictions from which network that should be available all they will set the restrictions and the maintenance also whether that server need to be main, uh, that product need to be maintained with a different server or that server should can be owned by Oracle or else you may buy the server infrastructure you can give to Oracle you can tell them I am giving the server you just install that applications in that server and you maintain maintenance please you take care of I'll be using this is how you also you can plan in case of private cloud Hybrid means the combination of public and private. Few applications you may use private, few applications you may use public cloud. That's how you can plan, that's how Oracle can help us. Okay, nothing much to do with that. It's a very the, the terms just to understanding only. So wherever you are going to use this, all applications are public cloud only. The clients, whatever they are using, mostly this all are public. You can just go and open from anywhere. So you can connect. So, that's so private so private cloud is more or like similar to on premise, but it will be maintained by Oracle, right? Yes. Is that uh, true? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But maintain, but they will create virtual servers against that, then they'll give the access. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Thank because you. for easy accessibility, that's all. Otherwise, if they are put place in server in one location, if they are installing everything inside of that, it would be very hard to use. That is the reason they'll create virtual servers and they'll give the access to the business. Fine. Yeah. That's thank all. you. SAS, PAS, IAS. Any questions from anyone, please? Okay. I have one more slide, just I'll run through. Okay. When you talk about fusion applications or say fusion cloud applications, there are few points we'll understand as of some new features. Once we get into the application, we'll see more detail level. Don't try to expect, uh, don't try to understand more from this slide. Just I'll take you through with a simple statement. What is that? So in fusion applications, we don't have any responsibility concept. If any, if user wants to have access to anything, it could be payables related application access or receivables or GL, take any application that is possible through roles concept. No responsibility concept. User will get access to any application through roles and the reporting in fusion applications we have inbuilt reporting capabilities like ba reporting and otba reporting and hyperion financial reporting these are the three different tools oracle is providing as inbuilt these tools you can use the ba reporting and otba reporting you can use in any application it could be gl or ap or cmr fa in any application you can use when you talk about hyperion reporting that you can use only in the general ledger application gl only in ebs we have fsg financial statement generator in fusion we don't have fsg in place of fsg they are giving hyperion financial reporting hfr we call fbda file based data import these are the templates which we can use to execute the data conversions the accounting finance side there is no much change but scm side how the accounting takes place how it would be derived the configuration they totally changed BPM stands for uh, business process management where you can manage your approvals in EBS we have AME approval management engine 
to manage the approvals but in fusion you don't see ame so instead of ame they give an application called as bpm business process management to set up approvals for your journal or journals or invoice approvals or requisition purchase order any sort of approvals across the applications you can manage by using the bpm application it will be working on all these and security console which is equal to your system administrator responsibility in ebs user creation in ebs what we do we will create users we will assign the responsibilities to the users this is all similar activities you can do in the security console here you can create the users and you can manage the roles etc and uh, fusion arc structure is different from the ebs arc structure we will discuss in the classes very detail level in uh, ebs you know the arc structure application and database but in the fusion we have a middleware etc we'll discuss more detail level just this is also as a some change you could see and fsm fsm stands for functional setup manager any application related configuration we do from the fsm only in ebs if you want to do ap setups we have to go to ap responsibility ar setups we have to be in ar responsibility that's how you can do all the setups but fsm will allow you to do any setups related to any application that means you can say fsm is a centralized place to do any application related configuration and in fusion you have to create the implementation project to manage your setups don't take implementation project means entire project execution no so it's only to manage the setups and the social networking in fusion application inbuilt social networking is available so that you can interact you can chat or you can pass a message across your team members if you are a business user you are working in the payables you can create a group however you create groups in the facebook you can create the group and you can start communicating with your uh, payables department people on say specific transaction related issues or etc when you are closing the periods you can communicate once you open the periods you can communicate if you have issue with the supplier you can communicate on any sort of message related to your work you can use that social networking which is inbuilt in the fusion applications oracle is providing the dashboards for almost all the applications so with the help of these dashboards you can reduce the time of going and running some reports and checking the data what where you have to take action who has to take the action for that request to which you submitted so with the help of the dashboards that information would be available where you have to take action which information you should understand and aware when when you are paying some role in the organization so ri stands for rapid implementation with this rapid implementation you can do the setups in the instance automatically with the help of spreadsheets by using the rapid implementation spreadsheets you can enter the data in the spreadsheet you can submit that spreadsheet to the instance automatically setup system will prepare you don't need to do setups through manual process and users we have a different type of users like implementation user and employee user we'll discuss once we get into that concept the same way enterprise structure in ebs we have a multi org structure similar to multi org structure in fusion we have enterprise structure how it is different or same with when you compare with the ebs multi org we'll discuss in the classes okay so just as introduction i mentioned we are not trying to understand much from this what it's so where it is related i'm talking about once we start with the actual sessions so we'll go one by one we'll when we talk about roles we have to spend enough time to understand when we talk about fsm yes we have to spend enough time to understand we'll discuss and we'll be working on the application so that's all about few points to talk about what we have not only this there are many other new functionalities also we have but very key and high level what i'm taking you through that's all and apart from that let me take you through the course curriculum then we can just jump in just we can wind up the session if we have any questions we'll talk about it so as a part of this course we are going to cover primarily these five applications these are primary focus we are going to have on these five applications and fusion tax fusion uh, expense fusion tax is nothing but in ebs we have ebt e business tax the same in fusion we are calling as fusion tax in ebs ebs ebt we have i expense the same we are calling as fusion expense in the fusion applications and in ebs in payables also you can record the expense reports but that is not possible in the fusion applications if you want to create any expense reports only the application is fusion expense
and to execute the p2p and o2c cycles you will be covering the basic purchasing and uh, inventory the inventory they given the application called as product management and order management this all will do the basic setups and will run through the p2p and o2c cycles yes we will cover ags and wrapped implementation approach data conversions okay the different uh, reporting tools fine F uh, frs smart view bi reports and otba reports and we'll do all these data conversions we'll execute uh, everything like we'll see how we have we can do we'll be doing in our sessions and uh, security console etc etc bpm and uh, the course what we are going to discuss so we'll just uh, do follow the approach of fresh environment based approach if you get access when you are working for any implementation project if you get access to fresh instance from where to start that approach we follow and wherever it is applicable we'll compare those concepts with the ebs if you are from ebs background so in that case this information would be useful if you are not from ebs no issues we'll be discussing each and everything is detail level uh, if you, and again i'll be comparing if anything is different or how it is different how it is similar or uh, where it, they change etc i'll be referring all the time with the ebs for comparison purpose so that's how well, and again another point is every session will record and will be sharing the video and that you can uh, download and you can keep with you permanently okay it's not like giving the access to videos for three months or six months one year access you can download the videos and you can keep with you permanently in future anytime if you want to play if you want to refresh so that would be possible so from general ledger application these are the different concepts which we are going to cover and from tables this is the configuration we are going to do and these are the set different concepts which we are going to cover there are few concepts i didn't include i'll be adding like apr netting etc i'll be adding some other concepts which i didn't include in the course curriculum the same way receivables configuration all these concepts will be covering in the receivables okay the same way cash management and fixed assets and fusion expense infusion tax and procure to pay in order to cash the configuration and the relevant transaction process or process flows so we'll be covering okay so that's all about this course now any questions from anyone please if no questions then you can wait drop lakshman if you have any question niran back we can discuss yeah yep can you hear me yes niranjan yep yes so i have two questions basically the first one is see our company is still in ebs and okay. they in future there uh, we do not see a road map to go into the fusion part okay. so how this course will help me uh, to uh, work on still on ebs uh, learning this fusion concepts so if you know ebs it's easy for mm -hmm. you to understand already discussed one point they take an ebs product into fusion and just they change some framework, framework appearance and for some functionality they did some enhancements very few new functionality they introduced so that means mm -hmm. since they taken same ebs solution into fusion you are going to mm -hmm. see the same in the fusion with a slight changes okay so it would be easy for you to understand you know what setups we have to do in the tables in case of ebs right mm -hmm. the same we will do here but there could be some slight difference there what are we call as financial options here you don't call as financial options here we call as common options for payables and procurement there you have payables options here we have invoice options and payment options and mm -hmm. few setups what are you can do directly in case of ebs here you cannot do you have to go with a different approach so this is mm -hmm. how to understand if you want to work on fusion application even if you have a vast ebs finance experience at least you have to go through these sessions and you have to practice twice or thrice so that you will be ready to work on the fusion applications but it is not going to be difficult okay. for for you don't think it is going to be some new course for you it's a known thing mm -hmm. but if you get access to ebs instance you know how to start with the implementation right yeah but if i give you the fusion instance access for you you will struck mm -hmm. yes okay where to start how to do the configuration okay so this and all we have to understand so that is the reason you have to go through this course 
Okay. And the second question is, although this Oracle Fusion has a lot of functionalities and new functionalities and facilities, still uh, the companies seems to be reluctant to go on Fusion. So why that is the case? See, there are few companies who has always concern about data security. But same time, I given the example that is a true. Many banks are started using Oracle Fusion Cloud that is a public cloud. For financials. Mm -hmm. So that is there. Okay, now, now you see almost all the ERP vendors are moving to cloud, right? They are providing the cloud services. For you to use, right? And to reduce the burden of CapEx investment for the customers with the several reasons, they're coming with a coming with a cloud. So still, who has concerns? Yes, they have, but who are ready to go, they are going. The fusion market is growing day by day, really good. No doubt that you could uh -huh. see the market. So, hey, Lakshman Venkat here. Understand. Could you give some insights into how one can get certified? Okay, just one second. Let me off the recording. I'll talk on that. Okay, that's all about certification. I mean, you still provide EBS trainings? Yes, we provide EBS training also. So, which are the modules? I mean, you provide the same curriculum almost. Finance all modules, including P2P and O2C cycle. Yeah, what about LCM in EBS? Yes, HRMS also. In EBS, HR, HCM, we call it as HRMS, Women, Women Resource Management System. Yes, no, no. I'm training on that. No, land, These details, uh, you can talk to the team, management. please. Okay, that related to trainings, etc., courses, you can talk to the team. You might be in touch with somebody from the team. You can talk to them. They can give you the detailed information. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, Lakshman, for EBS financials, uh, uh, like uh, we are using Art Artwell. Okay. So, what do you suggest we should do? The EBS certification, or EBS training, or uh, the cloud is is sufficient. It, it's it's still okay. You can go with the cloud. You can go with the cloud. Okay. So you are up, there is not trying to upgrade, right? I actually I am new to EBS as well. I was too. So. Okay. I'm but still, to, you can plan for this uh, cloud only because it's a. Uh, there is years and years. So now the focus is on cloud for Oracle as well as even clients are going to the cloud. Better you can plan for doing the certification for cloud. Okay. So, yeah. so basically people with OEBS background, newbies, so directly cloud should still be okay, right? Sorry, could you please repeat? Uh, people, people with no EBS background, hmm. so we still be okay with the finance cloud, right? Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, Lakshman, uh, uh, one quick question about e-business suite. Yeah. Since uh, Arclea is uh, started, you know, uh, encouraging clients to go for cloud. Yeah. Uh, do you know like how, how long Arc EBS is going to be around in the market? Is, or do they have any? Huh? No, sorry, thirty. Thirty. That's how Arclea announced. Okay. Okay. So that means after 2030, we should. Uh, I mean. All clients uh, will migrate to should migrate to cloud. We are, we are since Oracle sure. is not. Uh, we are not uh, sure. Oracle may extend that time frame later. Once we arrive 2030, or uh, there could be some other changes in between. We are not sure about it. That's what Oracle is saying as of now. Okay. Yep. They keep extending generally. Yeah, generally that happens. The same happened in case of EBS 11i version, right? Because the very big clients, okay, who are using that uh, 11i, still they are continuing with 11i. Still Oracle is supporting for 11i, very their premium customers. The same may happen in case of EBS Arpel also, but we are not sure. What Oracle says is they are going to support up to 2030 for EBS Arpel. Any questions from anyone, please? Okay, then that's all for today. We'll just 
see few other uh, roles or users etc what we should understand before we get into the application in the next session okay so the uh, next section is around uh, is going to be at the same time yeah same time same time as per yeah. the calendar on monday so lakshman can we continue uh, on the same time after a month no we'll pre pon for sure for sure yeah because there's people in like two hours almost <laughs> i'll talk to you on that okay fine uh, uh, lakshman what the time what the time we are uh, uh, probably thinking of the session sorry oh what is the session timing we are uh, thinking uh, talking about 8 to 9:30 for one month after one month we'll pre pon to 6 to 7:30 Okay, eight to nine thirty IST AM. Yes, correct. See if you have EBS background. Okay. If these timings are not flexible, you can go with the recorded videos from the previous classes. Those are very much interactive, and you easily you can understand. Okay. If you have any questions, I would be available to connect and discuss. And whenever you get time, you can attend these five classes. If not this batch, next batch. If not next batch, another batch. Up to one year, you will be allowed to attend live classes in any one of the batch. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. We will share the instance. You can go through the videos and you can practice. If you have any doubt or any issues, we can connect. Done. Okay. Yeah. You can think on. So till okay. one month, how much you will be completing? Uh, in case i'm not able to join we'll complete uh, payables to p2p okay okay yeah okay we may start with the receivables within one month yeah i'm i'm more interested in that actually so but okay. starting that fine yeah yeah fine any other questions from anyone please So, Lakshman, uh, yeah. uh, teaching uh, financial accounting hub as a separate module, not part. Yeah, of that that's a separate uh, one. Okay, that uh, we don't have as a part of this finance. But do you offer that course at all? No, no, no. Because uh, that is there is some less demand in the market, and other challenge we have is you need instance. I mean, if you want to see that uh, FH. fusion accounting hub which we call as financial accounting hub in evs here they name it as fusion accounting hub so here the clients are using that fh for the purpose of reporting only that's what we see the clients who are using the evs finance okay instead of preparing the reports by using fsg which is available in the gl the complete gl data they are syncing with a fusion through fh and they are preparing the reports in the fusion environment by using hfr high period financial reporting that is a purpose ideally that fh is used in the fusion applications even for training or any purpose we have to sync fusion instance with the ebs environment in that case oracle has to apply the patches and oracle should support support for the training purpose this all cannot be done that is the reason we are not running the classes on that okay and uh, i have another question on saas model yeah so oracle uh, it sort of upgrades right so yes every client has different data so when they roll out an upgrade yeah they let the client test first they'll give a window and then uh, once they are fine yes that's yes. when they update the app right, right. right? yeah first so in case one okay please go ahead now first oracle will just uh, auto upgrade the test environment okay okay they'll clone production to test okay they'll clone the complete production and they'll upgrade and they'll ask us to go and verify ideally there won't be any issues since there is no uh, customizations and all in case of saas so we can go and verify then we can give the confirmation to oracle then they'll upgrade production environment okay in a case let's say i mean i'm not sure if it's a frequent case or not but one particular customer finds that uh, a piece of uh, functionality or for his specific scenario is not working in the upgrade okay 
so but oracle upgrade all the clients on uh, to one specific version every latest version right so yeah. in that case how do they fix this issue and how yes, do, yes, yes. they have to make a code change how does i got uh, it i got it propagated to uh-huh. yes here the all the servers are virtual servers which would be resulted from the physical server so in the actual source product they will do the changes that would reflect to all the virtual servers if for one client when they are doing upgrade if they have some bug or something else okay that that they'll fix they'll apply the patches but they'll make sure that it won't repeat it for the other customer because server is the one physical server that's how they'll manage the product all are virtual copies only everything will be controlled from that if that instance is very specific to client allocated virtual environment that should be fixed within that all Like they do in ebs we have two two edition like okay. run edition and patch edition so Sorry. do we have like in in ebs and r12 we have two editions run edition and patch edition so yeah. is, is there any functionality in fusion as well because we can do any kind See, of patch apply yeah. on patch edition and do all complete end to end cycle check and come back and apply it on run edition yes 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 the same approach will be followed by oracle cloud dbas we we never involve in that the dba guys will do from their end but but that functionality is there in fusion as well in fusion application that's my question Re- really we are not very sure about it because we never uh, look into those points in case of cloud okay anything uh, we need any patch application or anything just will inform to dba what exactly how what approach they are going to follow whether they are going to apply the red patch or whether they are going to uh, do some service down and they are going to do how they are going to do we are not sure but i think lakshman you have already answered this like the oracle will be first up, uh, updating the test instance applying the patch there and they let the users test and certify then only they apply to production it's just yeah, similar to ebs yes in case of upgrade that is approach okay even for any new patches yeah for any new patches or etc what they do we are not sure about it but upgrade this is the approach they follow okay yeah and for data fixes uh so every customer that will have different data fixes so it's uh, oracle will help us we have to t- touch with oracle through srs only okay any other from anyone please right so then that's all for today we'll connect uh, lcm since we have sessions from monday to friday so we'll connect at sharp 8 o'clock on monday okay yeah sure and can we wind up by 10 o'clock 8 8:30 to 10 or it'll like no, be no, on no. 10 we just wind up by 9:30 on okay that will be my time 10 i'm in mean, uh, central time oh, okay okay yeah, right. if it goes past that it will be too late yeah yeah because see today is a kind of introduction and uh, we just see okay. questions from the participants so that is the reason we just spend this much time otherwise we'll start at Sharp eight will close by nine thirty. Just one hour thirty minutes. Awesome. Thank you. We'll do that. Thanks. Any questions? So the timing after one hour is a six thirty IST, right? After one month, yes. Six to seven thirty. Yeah. Uh, do you provide LCM training on ABS? Which training? Standard cost management. landed cost management no 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 you don't have training on that is that a separate module or part of the costing module ah uh, that is a separate application okay lcm okay right so then that's all for today we'll connect on monday thank you all have a good day and good night